If you guys are looking for any cheap and reliable coins, check out MMOPO.com. Use the code PINGU at checkout to get 8% off. You guys, welcome to Season 2, Episode number 10 of the Derby Current Live. And to start this episode, we're currently 10th in the table for Episode number 10, so quite, quite convenient there. Um, but yeah, we do have Spurs to kick off this episode, then we will be moving into the January transfer window, so very exciting indeed, just to see... Um, if we do get any offers for our players, we can potentially offload them and uh, increase the overall quality of the squad. I think we're at the right position, to be honest. This is what I was kind of expecting. Um, if we, if you go back a couple of episodes ago, obviously I was about fifth in the table, and I don't know, it's it a bit unrealistic. But now we've kind of leveled out. It's kind of incredible that West Ham are so high in fourth, um, and I think we do play them um, quite soon. So it'll be interesting to see how we do against them. But yeah. We've, we've kind of middled out now. We're literally middle of the table in 10th um, with 10 wins, 1 draw and 9 losses. Um, 54 goals scored and uh, 52 conceded, which is quite high when you compare it to the rest of the league. You know, the the next highest is uh, Leeds with, 50, uh, with 43. So, you know, we've conceded nearly 10 more goals. Um, but in terms of scoring goal, goals, um, we are top by about 14. So... You know, I think I think just outscoring the opponent is the only way to really um, get any good results. So, because of the number of fixtures, we do have a bit of a weak team in terms of uh, fitness. But going to keep Cabral up front just because of the, just because of the form he's been in at the minute. Um, so let's go into the game against Spurs, who we did lose against I think uh, quite a while ago. So it'll be interesting to see how we do in this game. Um, I'm almost tempted to put Liam Delap in just because. I think what I'll do is I'll probably play Cabral just because we have got the FA Cup next um, against Birmingham. So I think that that will be the chance for Delap to get some game time and a few other players in the reserves. Here we are then for the game against Spurs. I've decided to put them in their yellow kit just because it is quite a nice golden-y uh, yellow. They've got Hugo Lloris in goal, uh, Regulon Tanganga at fullback, then Matip and uh, Foyth, then Hoiberg and Winks, Bergwijn, Son, uh, Deli Alli and... Uh, Berenguer up top, I don't know who he is to be honest at all, I don't know if he's fast or tall or strong, but um, yeah, we'll wait and see what he looks like in the game um, I've decided to put Fernandinho and Vasquez back into the starting 11 um, just to try and get some points because we've really struggled this month so far and uh, yeah, we do need to get some points on the board Ali on the edge of the box a lot of space for him, through for Bergwijn and then into the back of the net to make it 1-0 in the 21st minute um it wasn't Bergwijn, it was the new striker, I can't remember what his name is. Um, goes down no goal, I think. Did that come off Bielik? Yeah, that's a little bit odd there. I didn't, I didn't think he got a touch on it, but he did. And, um, yeah, not the best of starts against Spurs. Deli Ali with the ball out here to Hyungman's son. Definitely don't want to let him shoot, but yedlin has got a great tackle in, but apparently it's a penalty because of the second... I won it on the first one, but I think the follow-through has given the penalty there. Like obviously against his former club, Yedlin. Um, if we just watch this back I won it and then I don't know, just a little bit lucky I think it's gone to the left this time it seems like they just keep switching sides with the penalties just to toy with me um, but yeah, Deli Ali does make it 2-0 there and um, yeah, against these top 6 sides it's just super super difficult now and I, I do like that it's kind of annoying that the game almost, I don't know it's just Really inconsistent with the difficulty at times. Once Jason Knight here slipped into Vasquez. Can he get the goal to make it 2 1? Yes, he can. And early on in the second half, we've got a chance here to uh, potentially equalise and get something from this game. First half, we were really poor, but it'll be interesting to see how we do now. Joswak into Cabral, slipped into Vasquez. <laughs> this game is just so weird at times. Like The first half was unbelievably hard second half and it's just like I don't know just opened up a bit it's like they've just switched off completely like the defender what is Matip doing there let's have a look at Matip defending here the guy in the blue boots surely he just tracked the run but he just literally just stood there he's just literally done nothing defensively like first half he'd move and block that pass but he's just no, just n nothing. Um, we've managed to make it 2-2 there, so potential chance to get a point from this game. Just work with the ball here, out wide. Can we get a potential cross into the middle to Cabral in a free space, but... 
picking up the best of headers in the world. Um, I will make a few changes due to fitness, I think. Um, we'll get Jordan Ibe on, and we'll get um, Liam Delap up front, and I think I'll even put um, Lawrence on. That's a poor pass from Matty Clark. Dinked into the box. Just poor passing from me. It's just giving them that goal to make it 3-2. It is... Um, I don't even know what his style of play is, to be honest. I don't know if he's fast, strong, but it's his first goal of the season. And, um, yeah, with 10 minutes to go, it's, it's going to be very difficult for us to get anything from it now. There we go, full-time against Spurs. It is four losses in a row. Spurs do beat, beat us 3-2. It was, it was much more narrow. Um, you know, a couple of goals for Vazquez in literally two minutes apart. Um, yeah, Hugo Lloris really good. Goalkeeper just saving a number of shots and uh, making it very difficult. Here we go, Mitchell Lawson has been sold for 1.35 million, um, giving us an extra 900,000. So uh, Dewar is uh, looking to cancel his contract. I think he's like one of the goalkeepers in the uh, youth academy. Again, I'm not too fussed about whether he goes or not, to be honest. Um, yeah, 60 rated. He has got an okay potential, but again, it's, it's just not very interesting to me personally. Um, this guy looks quite good, but again, we've already got a left mid um, signed up, so not exactly required at the minute. So next game is against Birmingham in the FA Cup. We have got a few messages here, um, quite a few players leaving, of course. Uh, training injury here to Fernandinho. Oh my god. ACL out for five months. That's pretty much the season over for Fernandinho then. That's really annoying. And he's just going to deteriorate in rating because he's out injured. So he's, he's probably going to be about 80 rated when he gets back. Um, but as you can see, we have thinned out the squad quite a bit. So that's that's good to see um, in terms of the numbers, of course. So let's have a look and see what else has uh, been reported. Obviously, both Mitchell Lawson and uh, Malone leaving on permanence. Um, Simulat on loan. Adiara Bayo out on loan, um, Martinez out on loan, Cabango out on loan, Hutchinson out on loan, Roden out on loan, Marshall out to uh, Forest on a permanent, and uh, yeah, that means we probably have quite a bit of money now on the office. Yeah, we've got 2.9 million, which is a decent amount of money, um, and I think what I'm going to do, because of that injury, it kind of makes sense to use Fernandinho as a bargaining chip because he's just not going to be He's basically not going to play now until the end of the season. Um, you know, you'll, he might be there next season. But he has got an expiring contract as well. So let me check if I can extend him. Because um, if not, then teams might just get him on a free. Um, we'll try and put him in the low deal first. And then and then if not, I can... Um, not the low. I keep getting, <laughs> I keep getting Bogle and low mixed up. Um, we'll put him into the Bogle deal. And if we can do a straight swap, then that would be great because, um, yeah, it's it's not great that he's out injured now until the end of the season. I'm kind of glad at the, at the same time because it means we're kind of forced to do this. Um, he's worth $9 million, so we'll submit that offer and see what they're looking at. Obviously, he's got quite a bit of wages as well, so that will go towards Bogle as well. Um, obviously, he's a very good player, so we'll be interested to see if Sheffield... United are interested than not. And we just don't have that much money. We don't have 17 million, funny enough. Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to think if we do have anything that we could potentially put into this kind of deal. Um, obviously, we have much le less centre backs now that we've loaned out um, quite a few of them. Centre midwives, we have got Rooney, could potentially put in. But then again, we're still going to be like 10 million short. Um, it was only really... Um, it was only really Fernandinho that we could put into these deals. Maybe we'll try Yedlin. Plus, um, I guess we go up to 3 million. Because he, he should be only on about 30 grand a week wages. Um, no, they're not. They're just literally sticking to a price tag. So, it's going to be very difficult to get this kind of deal over the line with what we've currently got. I'll put Adam Ida into the deal because he's not really playing too much at the minute. Um, and they are going to need a little bit of time. So it makes it interesting now because Fernandinho is a player that we kind of need to put into somebody if he's going to be in it of any use this season. Um, 
I'm just trying to think what we could potentially... We need to play around 10 million. We've also put Frimpong from Celtic on the uh, scouting port here. Someone did suggest him. Um, need to look at price tags, really. So it's only really like Dean Connor or Colin Grant that we could potentially get for what kind of money we do have. So I will go in for Colin Grant just because if we do get an offer for Cabral, he's kind of similar. You know, he's got good pace, Colin Grant, and quite strong and powerful. Um, it's mainly just to see if we can put Fernandinho into the deal. Um, so we will pop him in, submit the offer, and hopefully Huddersfield are interested in that. They're, they're looking for 12 million. Um, I'm trying to think what we'd put into those other deals. We'll, we'll try and put um, Adam Ida. Oh, yeah, he's gone into the other deal, hasn't he? So he can't be putting this one. It's kind of annoying when that kind of thing happens because they're probably going to decline it anyway. Um, so it makes this deal a little bit harder. We'll put DeAndre Yedlin in plus um, a million. And I think that'll be the kind of deal that I'd be happy with. Yeah, they're just it just seems like nobody wants swap deal players, which is kind of frustrating. We'll put Ben Foster in plus 1.1 million. Um... And they're going to need a little bit of time. So again, it's just trying to find a good place for a player. Um, and I kind of want to extend Fernandinho just in case. Literally, we can always use him in a swap deal anyway. Um, but we'll, we'll go into con contract negotiations because if any team comes in now and just picks him up on a free, we've lost the opportunity to um, put him into the, any deals. So his current wage is 32 grand. Um, it's kind of annoying because his rating's gone up a bit as well. So he's probably worth a little bit more. Um, so there's a one year extension that's good to see, he's been really good for us so far it's just a massive shame he's going to be out now until the end of the season um, we'll go to 30 grand a week wages plus a 110 signing on bonus, obviously it's slightly saving in the wages front um, knock off that appearance bonus and we should be good to accept that and there we go so we've saved a couple of grand in wages a week and it just secures him um to basically potentially use them in any deal. So let's let's go into our next game against Birmingham then. Um, I will play quite a strong team because there isn't exactly any fixtures for the next week. So we may as well play a strong team. And we don't really have that much depth now because of all the players that we have um, let go. Obviously we will make, need to make a couple of changes due to fitness. Um, but all in all, it will be quite a strong team indeed because of the well, lack of depth we kind of have now um, down on the bench. So it's kind of it's kind of good and kind of bad at the same time. Um, but obviously we'll try and invest that money into more um, useful players. Obviously, kind of want to put the lap in, but I, I do want to get the three point. Uh, I do want to get through the FA Cup in this uh, game. Obviously, Shuni's not got the best of fitness at uh, left back. I could always put Lee Buchanan in, actually. They're both on no sharpness at all, so it's it's not really... I guess we just put in Shinny, because he's obviously still 71. Um, with the minus 4. Well, seven, 69 anyway. He's, he's much higher than Buchanan in quality. Um, and yeah, obviously that central midfield position does get a little bit weaker now that we don't have... Um, now that we don't have Fernandinho, defensive midfielder-wise it might be worth converting Shinny back to a CDM and getting in a uh, new left back as well. So, yeah, that's something we'll have to consider. Here we are then for the FA Cup third round game against Birmingham. It will be a good chance to uh, just give us a cup, cup competition to uh, compete in, of course. Obviously, we did play Birmingham last season. Uh, Damari Gray against his former club, of course. And, um, yeah, we've had to put Fosu Mensa and uh, Shinny into that defence due to uh, fitness and... Um, it's still a strong team, but I think we need to kind of look to definitely improve that defence at the fullback positions um, going forward. So, yeah, they are playing a 4-2-3-1. Um, Prieto in goal, Hudson, um, Harley Dean, for Fana, Pedersen, Dave, David Davis and uh, San Jose holding. Then Fran Villaaba and uh, Daniel Crowley out wide. Bailey at the cam position and uh, Lukas Jukovic up top. It's a really mouthful of a name, but um, yeah, big strong, tall striker for them. Great tackle there from Cabral. Can we slip in Kamal Josriak to potentially get the first goal of the game with his left foot saved by the keeper? Could have potentially gone a bit 
further across the face of goal. Vasquez with the ball, slipped into Cabral. Can he get the shot off? Yes, he can, but a good save from the keeper again to prevent the goal. Um, we will get Bird on this corner and whip it into the back post, but the keeper's got it. Chance here for Joswiak if I can slip him in with the shot now. Can he find the back of the net? Yes, he can. It's been quite a while since we scored last time with uh, Kemal Joswiak, so good to see him get the goal to uh, get us into the lead against Birmingham. These cup games can be quite difficult, obviously, with the underdog uh, factor, but good good bit of play from Jason Knight to slip him in and, uh, yeah, finds the back of the net to make it 1-0. Joswiak with the ball out wide here. Good little run from him. Can he find somebody in the middle with the header? It's gone to Damari Gray against his former club. Does find the back of the net. Obviously, uh, I think he came through the Birmingham Academy. And, um, yeah, we've got, got it up to 2-0 now, which is good to see both of our wingers on the score sheet, which is quite a rarity, to be honest. Most of the goals come from um, the central positions, you know, like the cam or the striker especially. Um, yeah, it was a good run. I was kind of expecting... Um, Cabral to go for the header but it went it went grey he does get his uh, first goal of the FA Cup run on to Vasquez here on the edge of the box can we end off this first half make it 3-0 yes we can Cabral with the goal and there we go we've got all of our front three with a goal and um, yeah it just makes the second half obviously a lot easier and we can potentially look to bring on um, a few youngsters just to get them a bit of development of course especially Liam Dark, which is a bit of, you know, Cabral doing great is amazing, but I think Liam Dark did unbelievably last season, um, and it is a bit of a shame that we've not had the opportunity to play him more, um, but obviously Cabral's just been on fire and you can't really complain. Chance here for Gray, it's a good ball from Louis Sibley, can we make it 4-0 here to wrap up the game fully? Yes we can, there we go. There is the fourth of the game, and uh, Damari Gray gets his second goal against his old club. And, um, yeah, I think just getting through this first round just gives us a bit of momentum in the competition. And, uh, you know, later later down the line, we could potentially... Um, I don't know, it, it all depends on what opponent we do get in the next round. If, if we get another Premier League side, uh, if we get a Premier League side, then we'll play um, our full... Um, best 11 but if we're playing a championship team I might I might look to play a bit of a weaker team in the next round um, but it's nice just to get the extra bit of money as well for going through in the round well it's a Jos react can we make it 5-0 against Birmingham left footed shot into the back of the net it's I, I do I do forget how nice it is to play against uh, <laughs> you know like 60 rated defenders and 60 rated goalkeepers compared to the you know like 85 and the 86 rated players um, which is just unbelievable to play against and it's been quite a nice fun game to play which um, will hopefully um, go through to the players and give them that bit of better morale Jukovic with the ball through for Crowley Ramsdale comes out and he has chipped the keeper to make it 5-1 but yeah Jukovic just using his strength there to win the ball back and uh, Crowley does make it 5-1 but uh, I doubt it will make a difference to the result well, I to Josriak, lots of space at the back to potentially get his hat trick in this game, finesses it around the keeper, and there we go. We do get the hat trick for Kamal Josriak, and um, yeah, he's a player that has been really good um, on that left hand side. Obviously, played every single game um, on that position and not missed a single minute, pretty much. I don't, I don't think I've really subbed him off, and really good stamina, which is great. Um, just means you can keep him playing all day long. Chance here for Sibley, flicked on by. Liam Delap, can we get it through and potentially make it 7-1 with Louis Sibley? Yes, we can. Off the post and into the back of the net. Good to get Louis Sibley a goal, of course, just helps his development a little bit more. And, um, yeah, if we ever do sell either Cabral or um, Vasquez, obviously, we have got Liam Delap and uh, Sibley to come in to replace. There we go, full time against Birmingham, a 7-1 victory. Back to uh, business as usual, obviously, come on, Joswiak with the hat-trick and um, I, don't, I just wanted to get through in this round so we played a fully top um, you know first team Prieto did make quite a few saves actually um, on top of the seven goals that we did score but uh, yeah as you can see massive domination in this game so yeah as you can see the offers for Colin Grant and uh, Jaden Berger weren't accepted so those players are back now and um, yeah maybe we try Fernandinho in the Colin Grant deal maybe maybe I think we did actually yeah we did um, so yeah, we're kind of stuck at the minute um, because of the price tag of um, 
because of the price tag of um, Bogle. But what one thing I could try, I don't know if I can actually do this because he's transfer listed, is transfer list. No, I can't. So basically, you can't, you can't transfer list players that signed in that season, which I do quite like because it makes it realistic. You can only loan them out. Um, so yeah, we're in a bit of a conundrum to kind of generate money until we do get an offer, of course. Um, Dua has terminated his contract. Scout report here for Lamperty, and um, there has been an 11.1 million pound, 11.8 million pound bid for uh, Oli, Oliver McBurney. Um, let's see if Sheffield United will do a swap deal with Fernandinho for him, because Fernandinho is out now, so there's there's no actual need um, to keep him on the reserves. You know, by season, by the next season, it's it's a situation where he might not be necessary. So let's go in for. But McBurney and C, obviously Fernandinho is around um, 10 million, so let's see if they do accept this deal. Um, I will just go a straight swap and see if they're interested in this, the money. They're, they're just not that bothered, are they? Um, which is a bit of a shame because we don't really have anything else to really offer. So, yeah, I wasn't too bothered about McBurney anyway. I think we actually signed McBurney on FIFA 20s. Um, career mode so yeah I'm not I'm not too fussed but yeah as you can see we have got the scout report here for Lamperty is a 70 rated player 42 strength is the main issue I have with him um, and I just don't think he should have that low amount of strength to be honest he looked quite strong in the games that I've seen so far from him but um, yeah this Frimpong guy might be the answer because he has got much higher strength um, what kind of price he's 3.8 3.4 million um, it's not that expensive to be honest which is good to see but we'll, we'll wait and see what Frimpong comes back with so one thing I could look at is um, pre-contract signings but the problem is with those is that it seems much more frequent that players are renewing their contracts so it's kind of difficult to see who exactly is um, available for um, for free. I'm trying to look and see if there's anything. I don't think there's much on the loan list in terms of right back, so we'll try right wing back though. Um, but there is nothing. See, if we do sell um, Art Cabral, Michi Bachuai is the kind of replacement. He, he fits the bill um, of Cabral quite well um, and obviously is transfer listed, so we will be able to get quite a decent price for him. So we will um, add him to the shortlist just because obviously if, if we do get an offer. It would be nice to uh, bring him in, of course. So because we are in the transfer window now, um, I will be only playing two games an episode. Obviously, we played the Spurs and the Birmingham game. Um, so we'll save those next to the Liverpool and the Norwich for the next episode. Um, and then we'll play Brighton and uh, West Ham in the episode after that. And that way it just makes, um, obviously, the responses from you guys. It, it makes it easier to get feedback in a quicker amount of time. We do have 50k in wage budget, which is quite a bit. But I just don't think there's anything really... On our shortlist that we could potentially, I don't know, get. Um, I'm kind of waiting to see what Frimpong. I could maybe just approach and see if. Let's see if they get. Let's see if they get Fernandinho in a straight swap because then I wouldn't mind that kind of deal. Um, Frimpong looks much more physical, physical um, than Lamperty, of course, and we we do need a right back um, because Yedlin's just not really up for it. Um, but yeah, they are. Not interested, and they are going for a eleven million pound price tag. Um, I will try and do a straight swap. Um, take out that, knock it down to one point one. We still we still got seventy grand there, and uh, one point one. But yeah, the, it's just annoying that they're not interested in any of our players. Um, I wish there was a way of, I don't know, just seeing what they're interested in. In a way, we will try Ben Foster plus. Um, a couple of million and they're gonna need a little bit of time so it's kind of annoying this is because it just never comes back positive um, which is kind of frustrating but I'm just trying to think what I can get to improve the side since we are putting a straight swap in for Fernandinho I'm gonna try and get John McGinn um, brilliant player obviously playing in the championship just shouldn't be down there um, it would be interesting to see what the championship table looks like as well but uh, if we can get oh, not really put Fernandinho in um, who is worth 9 million will offer 2.5 as well on top of that and hopefully accept that obviously much better rated Fernandinho but I think McGinn at 77 still 
very good player, but they're looking for Louis Sibley. Mm. Nah, Louis, Louis Sibley's just not on the list of players that I want to put into this deal at all. Um, so I think what we'll try and do is put in a different player that obviously isn't being used at the minute, such as maybe Adam Ida. He's just not really playing that much Ida, although he is higher rated than Liam Delap. Um but I just, I just kind of prefer Liam Delap's style a little bit more. And um, we're going to have to knock this down to there. And hopefully... I will put Rooney into this deal because he has gone down to a 74 now. Um, so that's not great, is it? And I'll probably even knock this up by a couple hundred. And hopefully they accept that. They're going to need... A little bit of time to come back with an answer so again it's this the strict transfers does make it l much more harder in the past you you kind of match the value and the club would accept but now transfers are much more complex and um i do i do like that factor of course um but we're kind of waiting to see i'm not i'm not i don't want to sell them for the sake of selling them um but i think the replacement of batch ui for um Cabral would be the ideal choice, obviously, if if we get a big offer for him. Um, but it'd be interesting to see if that does happen or not, of course. So we'll have to wait and see. Um, we will put Fosu Mansa back into that defence because he is back from suspension. But as you can see, we, we really don't have that much squad depth now. Um, and I might consider, because of the lack of money that we do have, and... You know, we, we kind of need to think about maybe um, setting up a youth scout in a different area just so that we have, because at the minute we don't really have any defenders on here. Um, we've got the left back and a goalkeeper, but mostly midfielders. Um, so I think potentially setting up a scout port in a country that uh, has good defenders, that might be a good option. So we'll go... Just trying to think what country I'd like to uh, scout from. Maybe France. France have got good defenders. Um, and we'll go for defensive minded, of course. I think that's the best one, isn't it? Yeah, defensive minded. Will cost us 114k, but it's you know it's it's not really much money at all. Um, and obviously those plays can come in after the January transfer window. So that's that's kind of a backup just in case um, we don't sign any right back in this window um, we can look at that but yeah Yedlin's not really been great and unfortunately we've kind of fallen out with Nathan Byrne I think I said something at a post-match conference and uh, it's not gone well at all I might be tempted to sell Rooney at this point and try and you know get his wages off the um, get his wages off and um, just free up that space so I think that's what I'll probably do now at 74 rated obviously he's just deteriorating a bit too much and um, yeah, transfer listing makes a lot of sense. We have transfer listed Nathan Byrne, of course, and Graham Shinney, but I doubt anything's going to happen on that front. Um, one thing I will do as well, because of the injury now to Fernandinho, is move um, Shinney back to a central defensive midfielder, just because then, if we do get an injury to a cent, if we do get an injury to a midfielder, um, we can just replace them quite easily. Um, and obviously Buchanan can go back to left back. So yeah, it's it's just trying to, you know, with this kind of thin squad, we can always recall anyone if needs be at the end of the transfer window. Um, kind of want to see what we've got out on loan, but there's no way of scrolling it through that. But yeah, basically we've got quite a few defenders out on loan. So in terms of the players out on loan, um, we could always recall them such as Capaldo, central midfielder, just to add some numbers if need be. Um, if we do pick up a number of injuries, of course, the Dario Barrio as well, quite decent. Um, but yeah, it only cost us like 30 grand to recall these players, so not exactly that much. Um, but it's good to get some game time, of course, because they haven't really played at all. Um, and they've already played a couple of games, I think. Yeah, that would have been four walls, so it's good to see them already playing for them. Um, and Capaldo getting a few appearances as well for Burnley in the Premier League. Um, yeah, in terms of squad depth, I'm kind of happy with how it is at the minute. Obviously, both um, Josuak and Knight play in every single game so far of the season. 
but 38 contributions in 21 games for Cabral. Really good to see. Um, again, Vasquez with uh, 25 in 19. At, uh, uh, these are the two that if if we do get any bids in for, um, they're just going to make making transfers much more easier because they are worth so, so much. Um, one thing I might look at actually now is the happiness of a few players because I don't obviously want certain players to leave the club, um, especially our top, top players. So the likes of Josriak, um, Bielik and maybe Ibe, um, it might be worth extending their contracts. But then again, they are on four and a half year contracts. So unless I, um, although it will kind of force the move and it will ruin their morale. So you've got to be really careful now with contracts. Um, I just Obviously, we don't have that much money at the minute. If we are going to bring anyone in, um, it's going to be difficult to extend and sign signings. So, yeah, hopefully you guys did enjoy this episode of the Derby Curled Live. And uh, make sure you suggest some signings, mainly defensive ones, um, especially left back and right back. And, uh, yeah, see you soon. Bye.